In this episode, we're circling back on the cinematic video player. We'll bring it all together, program it, then demo the finished product. Stick around. Man, that smells good. When we last left off, we had milled the TV cabinet from Purple Heart and all the detail hardware from Brass. I made some changes to the circuit board and then sent them off to be made. See what I did there? And to finish it off, we've got a bit of work to do. First, we'll assemble the new electronics. Next, we'll need to bring the electronic subassembly together, installing the LEDs and the buttons. We'll mount the front bezel, face, and subassembly inside the cabinet. We'll finish it off by adding the brass hardware to the body. And then we'll load up these fancy scents into the scent wheel. We'll run through the software that tells this thing how to function, program a few videos for playback, and then test this thing out. That's a lot of stuff, so let's get started. So I received the updated boards along with a new solder paste mask, so it's time to assemble one. To do this, I have a simple screen print board that I mount the stencil to, and I always 3D print a board alignment tool, which differs from project to project. It's an easy way to align and print the solder paste without having to register the screen for each board. With that done, I load a board, pull the paste, and head over to the electronic workbench to hand place the parts. Placing the parts by hand, I use my Amscope microscope. There are lots of cheaper alternatives, but the optics on this Amscope are stereoscopic and have a great field of view. When finished, I run through a standard four-phase reflow cycle on my cheap but reliable modified T962 oven. Now, I always mention that it's modified, but I never say what's modified about it. Leave a comment below if you're interested in that, and I can share that in a future video. Once the board has been reflowed, I add the remaining headers and through-hole parts, then install the Pi Zero W. Finally, connecting the ILI 9341 display header to the board, which is in the correct orientation this time. Okay, with the electronics done, doesn't that look pretty? Let's just admire that for a minute. Pretty cool, right? But we're only part way there, so getting back to work, I install the LCD into the subframe. Using a couple M3 screws, I mount the board to the back side of the subframe. Then using a small amount of Starbond medium thickness CA glue to hold the LCD in place. By the way, this video is sponsored by Altium. If you're interested in great electronics design software, take a moment to download a free copy and see what you're missing. I've put links in the description to the Centomatic design file as well as the Altium Designer software. With Altium Designer, creating these projects is a piece of cake. The efficient workspace has some of the best features in the industry and through all phases of your development, you'll be empowered to do your best work as you grow into its more advanced capabilities. The link below will allow you a free trial version of the software that you can check out and see what Enterprise Class ECAD feels like. Now, back to the project. Next, I solder in the selection buttons and the respective 0402 LEDs. These things are super tiny. They're one half millimeter by one quarter millimeter in size, roughly. I buy these things pre-wired to save some work and headaches. I wire up the small speaker with a connector, then place the LEDs through the holes and fix them in place with a little bit more clear Starbond glue. With this step complete, I mount the speaker and USB connector into the rear cover.
Next, I mount the servo and fan into the scent duct frame. This positions and controls the scent wheel openings to the airflow of the ducts, thus changing the scent that's presented to the viewer. Next, I mount the Hollywood bezel, not Hollywood, well, it is Hollywood, bezel into the body using Starbond CA glue and instant activator. This completes the body. Next, the scent duct is mated with the front frame and glued together with more CA glue. Then finally, I complete the subassembly by gluing the rear cover into the scent duct frame. All connections are made and the complete subassembly are allowed to cure. Next, the subassembly is used to align and place the bezel on the acrylic face. While those dry, the scent wheel is loaded with the felt scent pads. They don't have any scents in them yet, but this is where we'll apply the scents later on. They're folded and inserted into each of the pockets. Now the wheel only rotates 180 degrees. To enhance the scent, each scent has a pair of pockets and thus pads, each located 180 degrees from the respective pair. The subassembly is then mated to the body and the acrylic face is glued in place. It's time to put hardware on the cabinet. To do this, I use more CA glue to attach the legs to the cabinet. Then attach the rabbit ear antenna to the top of the cabinet body. The last thing to do is to load up the scents in the scent wheel. Now the scent wheel has six different positions that it can be in. Since one of those positions is no scent, that leaves five scent positions. Since each of the scent positions has a pair of scent pockets, I have the choice of filling both of those scent pockets with the same scent or using complementary scents. I decided to use complementary scents in each pocket to add some more complexity to the smells that were produced. That said, I used a total of 10 fragrance oils for the six positions. Actually, it's only five positions because the first one is no scent. With that, the first pocket will be left empty so that I can turn off the scent. The second position is for tropical scenes. For that I used coconut and plumeria scented oils. The third position will be for fire scenes. For that I used campfire and hot cocoa scented oils. It smells like real campfire. It's strange how accurate they are. The fourth position is for woodsy scenes. For that I used fresh cut wood and forest pine scented oils. The fifth position is for fresh scenes. For that I used winter mint and candy cane scented oils. And finally, the sixth position is used for candy scenes, and for that I used cupcake and sugar cookie scented oils. These all smell so great, I wish you were here to actually smell them. Um, with that, the loaded scent wheel is inserted into the air duct and mounted to the servo with the screw. Now this thing is ready to go, so let's head over and talk about the software and how it'll all work out. Now for the functionality of the Pi Zero, I wrote a Python script that will perform all the logic of the system. The basic functionality of the system is to do this. Automatically start up, initialize, then wait for a button to be pressed. When a button's pressed, the respective video should start playing. While playing, the system should read video data, then move the servo to the correct scent. And when the video is over, return and wait for another selection to be made. All of this logic was pretty straightforward and written into a Python script that was then added to the rc.local to automatically launch during the system startup. When initializing, the system sets up the GPIO pins in their correct states, associate the buttons to the respective video, resets the scent position, then waits for a button to be pressed. When a button is pressed, the software loads the video data, then plays the respective video. The video data has a scent position for every second of the video. This tells the server where it should be at any given second during playback. And while the video is playing, the system reads the video data for the playback time, then updates the scent well position based on that data. So for example, if I wanted scent position four to be presented to the viewer for three seconds, the data would have three fours in a row. Make sense? And since the video data has a scent value for every second of the video, you just put the scent values in the positions that you want sent. If the video didn't have any sense, it would have a zero in every second of the data set. So to simplify the format of the file, I made each line represent a minute. So each line in the file has 60 comma separated values, each representing one second of that minute. Neat, right? And pretty easy to set up. Next, we'll set up a video file 
with it still winter and Valentine's around the corner, let's set up a couple romantic videos as well as one or two winter vids. Once I have a video, I create a text file with the same name except for a dat extension. Then create a row for each minute of the length of the video. Each row consisting of 60 comma delimited values. I start off with all zeros, then change the values at the right time to introduce the scents that sync up with the video. For example, using the campfire during the scenes with the fire and forest pine for outdoor or garland scenes, and cupcake and sugar cookies for food scenes. You get it. Just take some time to enter the values and save it off. Another cool feature is that you can mix scents by alternating two scent positions back and forth. Like in instead of sticking on the same scent, you can alternate like four or five, four or five for a minty woodsy smell. Great for like a winter scene. It's neat to play around with these and be creative with the smells. Once the files are loaded on the TV, we can just start it up and test it out. Now for copyright reasons, I'm limited to how much audio I can share with you. And for the full effect, it really requires smell, so you're just going to have to use your imagination. Good afternoon. I am Olaf. Hey, Olaf. Please let me finish. During playback, while the fan pumps air over the wheel, you can watch it rotate intelligently to the correct scent position. Oh, we make candy canes together. <laughs> and on the front side, where the scent comes out, you can feel the flow of air and smell the great scents. To help see the airflow, I use a small piece of tissue paper to help you visualize the air coming from the scent ports. Pretty neat, right? Well, this project's been a lot of fun, and it's always cool to see things come together into a finished product. So what do you think? What would be your best movie to add scent to? Leave a comment below. I got a few ideas. And while this project's a little tongue-in-cheek, it works nice when it's used subtly to enhance the scene. It's neat, and it was a lot of fun. Not to mention, my shop smells great. And that's going to do it for this video. Hopefully you enjoyed this look into bringing this little retro-tastic project together. I'll be sharing all the designs, schematics, and code files below in the description for you to explore, modify, and learn from. If you're new here, hit the subscribe button and ring that notification bell. It'll keep you in the know when newer videos are released. Lastly, I hope your year is off to a good start and you're on your way to working to accomplish your goals. I'll be announcing the Arcader winner in the upcoming week, so go check out that video again if you haven't entered yet. Last chance. Fresh sugar cookies. Smells so good. In the meantime, be safe, have fun, and I'll see you next time. Hey, if you liked the video, please subscribe to the channel. It's how we're building the community. Also, allow me to bring better content. Also, check me out on these other social networks. There's lots of cool stuff there, too. Maybe they just need a song in their hearts. Uh -huh.